In Poundland in the UK, if you go for a pack of the LED lamps, you can choose either the Ultra Bright, which are a bit cheaper than the Kodak. These ones are rated 6 watt, equal to 40 watt. These ones are 10 watt, rated equivalent to 60 watt. Uh, and I decided, let's take a look at the Kodak ones and we'll see what the quality is like. We shall see if it's hackable. So first of all, let's test one. So I shall pop a lamp out. Uh, incidentally, it says, and this is very optimistic given this style of lamp, uh, 806 lumens, warm white, three year guarantee. Do you think they're going to honour that? I think uh, you might get your money back, but I'm not really sure. I think they rely on people just not getting their money back. Let's bring the hoppy up and we'll test it and see what the power at rating actually is. So this is supposed to be 10 watts. I shall screw it in. And we'll see what it actually is. And then we'll see if we can hack it. We'll see what the circuitry is like inside and hack it to bits and see if we can reduce the power. It's, it, it's lit. Uh, it says 10.79 watts. 0.6 power factor, which is average. Yeah, that is about 10 watts. So just over 10, let's say the best part of 11 watts. So the, if it's based on the usual thing that these are, it will probably self-regulate back a little bit if it gets too hot. By which time, all the LEDs are emitting smoke. Right, it feels the same as the others. It's got that super lightweight feel to it. Let's spudger it. So the spudger slips down the side and then by slicing it round, it will theoretically cut the silicon, possibly cut me as well. We'll see what happens. I'll try not to do that. Is it going to come off at that? Is it going to come off at that? No, I was over ambitious. Let's give it another go. Oh, scratchy, scratchy. Hopefully it is one of these ones that has the two resistors and the linear regulator because that was, would be a very easy hack. A lot of these lamps are just branded with prominent brands. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight LEDs. Let's work out the dissipation of each LED. So that was best part of 11 watts divided by eight equals, they're dissipating about 1.4 watts each, which is quite a lot for a little 2835 LED. These will be multi-chip LEDs. So where is my magnifying glass? Oh, <laughs> There is the rectifier. There is the little linear regulator. I'll, I'll take a picture of this so we can take a closer look. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. So I've blown up the image of the lamp here. And the mains comes on here. It's got the little insert through this aluminium uh, PCB. And that goes straight to the bridge rectifier here. There will be a in series resistor in that, uh, typically around about 10 to 30 ohms. It goes through the bridge rectifier, gets converted into the DC, goes straight to this uh, through circuit board connector for a capacitor. So there'll be an electrolytic capacitor on the other side. And that has got a discharge resistor across it that also poses a slight load. 560k, it prevents the ghost, the ghost glowing of the lamps when you've got a two-way switching. Uh, the positive goes through all the LEDs, and these are multi-chip LEDs, and then it comes back to this regulator chip, which is a JW19813, and that uh, then is the tab connected to the negative, and it also has a 15 ohm sense resistor. Now, it's got positions for two resistors, but in this instance, it must have been a nice round value. They've just used one. Normally, they'd use two just to get a fine-tuned value, and that is a resistor we're going to have to change. Things worth noting, each of these... LED positions is unpopulated uh, is bridging out the two LEDs that's in between. So supposing you wanted to just make this a four LED lamp, you could remove all these LEDs and just put one, two, three, four in, either on the lower voltage lamp, like 120 volt, or you could use the larger arrays of LEDs because these chips don't just, con well, they contain one piece of the LED substrate, but it's got multiple LEDs that snake backwards and forwards along it. And that just means that each LED is like effectively loads of LEDs in series. And typically they'll add up to, in the case of the UK, about 300 volts. So for that, uh, it would be eight LEDs. So about 300 volts, roughly, uh, divided by eight LEDs is about 37.5 divided by about three volts across them 
probably about 12 chips in each of these. So that'll be a little 4x3 array uh, that just zigzags backwards and forwards. It's a really common way of doing it these days, but it also means these chips get very, very hot, which means they don't last very long, which is why we're going to fix it. Uh, the other thing you could do, suppose you wanted to make it a 7 LED lamp instead of uh, the 8, you could just put one of these LEDs here and just omit these two, and that would give you 7. And likewise, if you wanted, say, 6, you could keep the 4 LEDs at this side and then just populate those two positions. And it just means they've got loads of combinations that they can do for skimping on LEDs or adjusting for different supply voltages. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to desolder this sense resistor, which is 15 ohms. Uh, well, I'm just going to cut it off, in fact. And then I'm going to solder another resistor across. Now, this lamp was rated about 10 or 11 watts. I like to aim for 3 watts for these lamps because it makes them run a lot cooler and they'll last a lot longer. Brings them well within the rating. So I'm going to triple the value of that uh, up to about, well, that would be 45 ohms. The closest value is 47 ohms. I'm going to put that in. And I reckon that's going to be, say, about 3.5 watts. We shall find out. I'm about to do it right now, and then we can test it. So here is the bit I'm going to be working on. Let's zoom down on this and focus on it, which would be really good. Uh, can I get close without it getting too grainy? It might get grainy. It tends to revert to digital zoom. I'm going to actually just cut that LED off because it's easier than desoldering it because unfortunately these aluminium substrate PCBs tend to be quite uh, absorbent for heat. That That's the point of them. They uh, will dissipate the heat so well that it makes it very, very hard to solder on them. So let's bring that into shot. And I shall bring the solder iron in. Look for the soda that I had earlier on. There's a bit there. And I shall put it onto these pads and try and remove what was left of that before. Hopefully by soldering onto the uh, the existing soda, it's going to make it easier to get a, a connection. Well, that's not happening. The soldering station says, what the heck? One moment, please. And resume, back once again with the Renegade Master D4 Destroyer Power to the People, as the song goes. Uh, thermocouple conked out in the soda iron there. It was showing weird temperatures. Different handle on now. Ah, uh, this is a lot better. Mm, this is so much better. Yes, it is. Right, tell you what, I'm not going to be too pretty about this because it doesn't have to be too pretty. I shall uh, shape this resistor like... Something along the lines of that, right, okay. And I shall crop the lead down and then solder it onto that. Using the existing soldering pads, because they get solder on them, it provides a slight buffer between the, uh, the solder iron and the um, aluminium substrate, which means it just makes it a little bit easier to solder. The one thing you don't want to do with these, it's open circuit isn't so bad, it's not ideal. Short circuit is bad because a short circuit stops it sensing the current and it will, I think it will have a default uh, emergency current threshold inside, but it's not ideal. Don't do it. Other things happening tonight, the Windows has decided that it's just not going to recognise any networks, Wi-Fi networks, that's splendid. Uh, I shall try and resolve that afterwards. I was trying to update a little router, or router, as you might see elsewhere. Uh, right, let's see if I can get this soldered. Again, not going to be too pretty, I'm not too bothered. As long as it tacks on it's reasonably good, that should be it. Right, which I have done. It is tacked on. All right, I shall zoom out again. Zoom. Let's plug it in and see what the power is this time. Or, indeed, if it just goes bang. So in goes the happy. There's my little pink lamp holder. I shall screw this into the lamp holder, complete with its floating 47 ohm resistor. And I shall plug it in, and the power 
has dropped to 4.5 watts, which is a bit higher than I was expecting, but is still okay. It could go higher than that. Another thing I noticed about this is that it can, uh, it's a very standard housing. It will take my standard uh, 3D printed crystals, which is quite nice. It makes really nice lights, but really I'd be wanting to lower the power down a bit more for that. Should we try another resistor? Maybe we should try a 100 ohm. Tell you what, I shall try a 100 ohm resistor in this. One moment, please. Okay, resistor change, let's screw it in. Uh, so what are your guesses this time? It went from 11 watts down to 4.5. When I change from 15 ohm to uh, 47, this is gonna be about two or three watts. 2.3 watts, that's ideal. To be fair, with the 47 ohm resistor, it, it half the power. This is still fairly bright. It's competing with the sort of studio lighting here. Uh, good for these ornate caps. Uh, but this would definitely, you know, by adjusting the power, if you say you were to half the power, as I did before with the 47 ohm resistor, that will considerably extend the life of like exponentially um, and improve the efficiency of the lamp. When you go even lower, like I've done here, it goes from being, the lamp goes from being a sort of like a, a large area illumination lamp to a sort of, sort of cupboardy sort of corridor type lamp. But the lifespan will be massive now because the lamp is running at a fraction of its original power. I just want to see what that looks like with it there. With its cover back on, noting that you should really sort of glue the cover back on if you do this stuff. Also, I shall write on it the power that I have changed it to. Uh, where's the pen? It's now 2.3 watt. 2.3 watt. It has been doobied. It has been hacked. So, um, yeah, it's not as easy a hack as the lamps that have the two resistors in them. But you know, it's still uh, a, a fairly straightforward hack. You just have to put that quarter watt resistor or other surface mount resistors in. Uh, easy enough to open. It's just basically, it's a standard lamp with a Kodak brandy on it, isn't it? But there we go. That was worth exploring and worth hacking. That is the Kodak 10 watt lamp from Deals and Poundland.